Bon après-midi. So my name. Testing. Okay, we got it. We're good. Okay. We'll take that again. Okay. Good afternoon. Bon après-midi. My name is Constable Amy Gagnon. I'm with the Ottawa Police Service, and I will be the MC and the moderator for this technical briefing regarding the Merivale Road explosion and fire that occurred on January 13th. Alors, je suis l'agent Amy Gagnon de la, du poli, service de police d'Ottawa. Je suis votre hôte et modératrice pour cette séance infotechnique quant à l'explosion et l'incendie du 13 janvier dernier sur le chemin de Maryville. Bienvenue. Welcome. Today's speakers are Regional Supervising Coroner for East Region, Ottawa Office, Dr. Louise McNaughton Fillion, Deputy Fire Marshal with the Ontario Ministry of the Solicitor General, Tim Beckett, and Ottawa Police Service Inspector Frank Daou. Nos, nos conférenciers sont la Dr. Louise McNaughton Fillion, coroner régional principal de l'Est Bureau d'Ottawa, le commissaire adjoint des incendies du ministère du Solicitaire général de l'Ontario, Tim Beckett, l'inspecteur Frank Daou de la police d'Ottawa. There will be an opportunity for media questions once the presentations have been made, there will be no one-on-one -on -one interviews granted following the briefing. Les médias pourront poser leurs questions dès que les représentations sont terminées. Par contre, aucune entrevue individuelle ne sera accordée. Okay. So we will start with Dr. Louise McNaughton Fillion. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to participate in this technical briefing. The presence of the media to inform the public is very important and much appreciated. It is unfortunate and sad that we actually have to gather today, though. Bonjour à tous, et merci de m'avoir donné l'opportunité de participer à ce compte rendu. For those who have lost a loved one in this tragedy, or are waiting to hear about a loved one who may be involved, please accept my sincere sympathy. I express this on behalf of the Office of the Chief Coroner and the Ontario Forensic Pathology Service. Pour ceux dont les proches sont victimes de cette tragédie, j'offre mes plus sincères condoléances. The Office of the Chief Coroner and Ontario Forensic Pathology Service is committed to providing the highest quality of death investigation aimed at the prevention of death, contribution to the administration of justice, and the protection of public safety. We speak for the dead to protect the living. Nous parlons pour les morts pour protéger les vivants. With this in mind, we're taking a stepwise approach along with the investigation team to answer the five questions which must be answered in any death investigation. The identity of the deceased, when and where the individual came to their death, how did the person die? And finally, the classification of the death, such as a natural or an accidental death. A coroner's investigation does not lay blame or pass judgment. The goal is to determine the facts surrounding the death and possibly make recommendations to prevent further deaths. Notre objectif dans cette enquête est d'identifier les personnes décédées, la cause et les circonstances du décès, et finalement de faire peut-être des recommandations si nécessaire pour prévenir d'autres décès. Now this work will take time. With the contributions of the Office of the Fire Marshal, the Ottawa Police Service, Ottawa Fire Services, the Ministry of Labour, the Technical Standards and Safety Authority, Transport Canada, and the Office of the Chief Coroner and Ontario Forensic Pathology Service, 
we will investigate these deaths thoroughly and consider recommendations to prevent further deaths. Merci aux membres multidisciplinaires de cette équipe d'enquête. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. I'll now ask Deputy Fire Marshal Tim Beckett. Alors, le commissaire adjoint des incendies, Tim Beckett. Well, good afternoon, everybody. On January 13th, the Office of the Fire Marshal was called in to assist both the Ottawa Police Services and the Ottawa Fire Service in investigating the explosion on Maryville Road. Before I begin, I'd really like to express my condolences on behalf of the Fire Marshal to the families and the community that have experienced uh, such a tragedy uh, at, during this event. Our hearts and thoughts and prayers are with each and every one of you. So from the Fire Marshal's perspective, under the direction of the Fire Protection and Prevention Act, the Fire Marshal is tasked with determining the origin, the cause, and circumstances of the incident. In order to achieve this task, we've de deployed a rather large team consisting of 10 fire investigators, a fire protection specialist, a forensics engineer, a supervisor, and an operations manager. And over the past three days, we've worked with our community safety partners to assess the scene and take the necessary steps to ensure the safety for all those involved. To date, our work has included examining aerial drone images, interviewing a number of witnesses, and starting to use heavy machinery to remove debris and start to look and collect our evidence. Our investigation process is very thorough, and the thoroughness of our process means it takes time. Our team has been making progress, however, there's still a lot of work to be done. Following the completion of the site examination over the course of the next few days, our investigators will take the evidence that they've collected and continue to conduct analysis and test hypothesis in the event, uh, sorry, in order to determine the cause of this event. It is much too early in our investigation right now to report any information surrounding the cause of the event. The scene of the explosion has been very challenging for all those involved in this. The cold, the site conditions, the size of the area, and the magnitude of the blast have created challenges that we are continuing to deal with and overcome. As we said, it's going to take some time to thoroughly sift systematically and method, uh, method, method, the method, methodological approach sorry, to that um, is something that uh, is part of our process. It's not fast. We are dedicated to working with all of our stakeholder partners and sharing information as we go through and making sure that the examination and the investigation is thorough. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll ask for Inspector Frank Daou from the Ottawa Police, L'Inspector Frank Daou. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Frank Daou. I'm one of the inspectors uh, responsible for coordinating the resources at the site. I'd like to first start by offering my sincerest condolences to the families impacted by, by this tragedy. Many people are working together day and night to make sure that we find your loved ones and we figure out what exactly happened. Our hearts go out to you in these unimaginable circumstances. As we had mentioned previously, the Ontario Fire Marshal, Ministry of Labour, Regional Coroner's Office and the Ottawa Police Service continue our respective investigations at the scene 
of a large explosion and fire that took place last Thursday on Maravelle Road. We're trying to determine how it should have been a normal day at work went so tragically wrong. We're working to recover the people who still remain unaccounted for. At the same time, we're collecting evidence for the investigation to the case and to the cause of the explosion and the fire. Unfortunately, at this time, no one has been recovered. There are a number of things creating challenges in our recovery efforts, and every precaution is being taken to ensure the safety of everyone on site. With permission from families, we will be sharing a photo that shows you an overhead look at the magnitude of the destruction. The photo will be attached to the news release issued following this briefing. The structure itself is still very unstable, and we have not been able to get inside of it very far as of yet. There's also potential of various chemicals and flare-ups when debris is removed. We're also monitoring the snowstorm in the forecast overnight and making contingency plans as to not disrupt or slow down the work that still needs to happen. The structure is being dismantled and searched methodically, but this is a long process and could take several days or more. Due to how heavily, heavily damaged the building is, there are many, many layers of debris and we have to be careful. Our arson, forensic identification and general assignment investigators are assisting the coroner's office with their investigation. Our victim crisis unit is also engaged. This includes collecting evidence, conducting interviews with witnesses, supporting the victim's families and providing 24-7 site security. We continue to work and coordinate with the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development, who are leading their own parallel investigation. Technical Standards and Safety Authority and Transport Canada have also been involved over the past few days. The Ottawa Fire Services has been an invaluable help in assisting us with site equipment, logistics, and supplies. Ottawa paramedics continue to support us as well. Thank you both. We want to acknowledge the members of the Ottawa Fire and Paramedic Services who responded on January 13th. Your actions were nothing short of heroic, and we all wish there was more that could have been done that day. We know there will be some people close to the victims who want to come to the site to express condolences, and for that reason, we have established an area where you can safely do so without hampering the recovery efforts or jeopardizing the integrity of the investigation. The area located at the Eastway business sign located at the entrance of the driveway. Just be mindful not to block access. We realize there's always a feeling of urgency when a tragedy such as this occurs to find answers and to locate the victims. Please know that we're moving as carefully and quickly as possible to provide meticulous investigative evidence and the utmost respect for the victims and their families. We will continue to keep you updated on our recovery efforts and investigation in the coming days. We also want to remind people that support is available if you're finding the news of this tragedy difficult. If you need to talk to someone, please reach out to any of the community supports available, such as Distress Centre Ottawa at 613-238-3311 or by text at 343-306-5550 or visit dcottawa.on.ca. Thank you. Now, our speakers will take media questions. So we have approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And you will be able to ask one question, one follow-up. We do have a floor microphone. Can you just make sure it's turned on? Um, just the button. Down. Press it. Middle. Down. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Alors, nous avons 15 à 20 minutes pour la période des questions. Alors, on, vous allez pouvoir poser une question, une question de suivi. S'il vous plaît, lorsque vous êtes au micro, nommez-vous, identifiez euh, la média, les médias que vous représentez. 
So please identify yourself with the microphone and the media that you represent. Go ahead. Hi there, good afternoon. Travis Stanmer, CBC National News. Thanks for taking our questions. Uh, I'm just wondering, trying to figure out like, what, what is the update? What additional new information do you have today uh, that you didn't have a couple of days ago? Is there any new information that you can provide the families and the public? At this point, it's our uh, third day into uh, the investigation. Uh, we're meticulously removing debris, uh, pieces of the roof, uh, walls, and uh, certain pieces of equipment inside the building. And uh, our efforts, as I mentioned, uh, are, are hampered by, uh, by the cold and the, uh, the risks on scene. And uh, so we haven't. Uh, For that. Uh, also, just wondering about the intensity of the fire and if that will hamper uh, getting DNA evidence or identifying uh, DNA evidence. And, and also, if you could talk a little bit about the storm that is uh, coming in tonight and how that could possibly hamper efforts and what the contingency plans are. I can answer part two of your question, two and three. Um, we have contingency plans. We're preparing to have large uh, tents uh, that uh, logistically were provided by the uh, Ottawa Fire Service. And these large tents will help uh, protect uh, the evidence that's uh, exposed uh, to the elements. We also have a storm removal uh, that will be available to us to, uh, to assist us. Uh, as for the first question about the identification of the DNA. Yeah, exactly. I was just wondering, because of the intensity of, of the fire, does that hamper uh, your ability to gather DNA evidence? Uh, and if you could just talk a little bit about that. Um, maybe you could start talking about gathering evidence related to the fire. So with the... The training that the investigators and the experience that the investigators have on site, they'll go through um, all the debris, and this is what takes so long in terms of uh, the, the investigation aspect. Um, the intensity of fire causes us, you know, uh, more difficulty in, in the examination of, of uh, evidence. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll pull together all different types of evidence, whether it be and I'm only providing some uh, general examples here. These aren't things that we've collected on site as of yet, but you know, they'll, they'll look at machinery, they'll look at uh, you know, uh, the, the um, utility aspects of things, any on-site hazardous type materials, collecting samples that would be left uh, even after the fire has occurred. And we'll take all those types of evidence and start to uh, forensically look at each of those pieces and, and, and try to put the picture, uh, essentially put the picture together as to what occurred. Um, there'll be a number of hypotheses that uh, the fire investigators will start to look at based on the evidence that they've collected, the witness statements that provided uh, evidence in terms of what uh, they were doing at the time, and then uh, also looking at uh, you know, the, the whole aspect of the, the building and the structure itself and the damage that occurred, we'll be able to put, start to put the pieces together that way. You know, from a, a DNA aspect, I maybe looked at the, the doctor to see if she could provide it for their information on that. Well, first I'd like to say that we have been able to locate some human remains. It has just been dangerous to access them, so we have to wait until there's safe access. Um, at this time, whether DNA is required or not has not been determined. We'll have forensic specialists who will be looking at the remains once they are recovered, and then a decision whether DNA needs to be used or will be made at that time. I'm assuming you're talking about the DNA of the victims. Of the yeah, and the story is there. It, it happens the process when it comes to identification. Any type of, of damage, and I'm speaking in general, right now, any type of damage that occurs from a fire um, or an explosion makes it difficult for identification. It does. 
uh, and we have many different forensic methods to determine identification, and we will not release um, to the family um, the, all the identities until they are all uh, found. But we have many different forensic methods of determining identity, and it depends what we see when we've got the, uh, the, when, the when we find that we have access to their brains. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Danny from City News Ottawa. Um, I'm just wondering, what is the blast? The size of the blast area, the uh, crime scene square footage, do you guys have that information? I, I don't have the, uh, the size um, of the, uh, the scene. I don't have the exact measurements, but uh, what we know is that uh, our investigators are, are working in and around the, uh, the East Way um, building and extending just uh, beyond uh, the, the yard area um, of the of the building, so within the property lines, uh, is where our investigation uh, continues. So uh, we're, we're not seeing any investigation aspects uh, at this point in time outside of the uh, the, the the property lines. Okay, and uh, at one point I think it was uh, there was talk of it being uh, deemed a, a homicide case just because there or possible homicide case treated as such. But are there um, official names you're giving to the scenarios that you're looking at? Is, is it uh, accidental? Is it homicide? What, what have you guys labeled it as or looking for at this point? As for your first question, it's uh, much too early to determine uh, the cause. Uh, we, uh, as Ottawa Police uh, investigators, are assisting uh, the coroner's office in, uh, in their investigation. And, and from our, from the fire marshal's perspective, it's it, right now it's classified as under investigation. Um, there has no been no determination as to what we're what we're looking at. We're looking at all possibilities right now. It's okay. very much early in the uh, investigation stage. Great, thank you. Hi, bonjour, Marie Jeanne Dubré, Radio Canada. I'm basically going to ask the same question as my colleague here, but in French. Qu'est-ce qu'on a de nouveau aujourd'hui eh, par rapport aux, derniers, aux dernières informations qu'on a eues il y a quelques jours? Donc, je vais commencer. Donc, euh, ça fait trois jours euh, qu'on travaille sur les lieux. On euh, enlève du, du, du débris et on rend la scène euh, sécuritaire pour, euh, pour les enquêteurs qui sont euh, sur la scène. Donc, euh, de notre côté, Euh, on continue à euh, sécuriser la scène et puis euh, à essayer d'avoir accès aux différents endroits euh, de l'édifice euh, pour euh, tenter de retrouver euh, les individus. Et considérant le fait qu'on présume les cinq personnes qui sont encore disparues comme étant mortes, euh, que les familles ont probablement déjà toutes été contactées, Individuellement, qu'est-ce qu'on attend pour dévoiler l'identité des personnes qui sont présumées euh, décédées? Donc, je vais laisser céder la parole à la coroner. Alors, merci pour la question. Le, le coroner enquêteur a déjà communiqué avec les cinq familles, actuellement six familles, parce qu'il y a une personne déjà décédée. On ne peut pas présumer qu'il y a juste cinq personnes. On pense qu'il y a cinq personnes parce que C'est ça l'évidence qu'on a en ce moment. Euh, ils sont tous informés à chaque étape de notre euh, investigation. Euh, alors, comme j'ai dit à une autre euh, personne, on, 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 a, on a localisé quatre, quatre corps qui sont là, mais l'identification, ça va arriver beaucoup plus tard, euh, et, et, et ce n'est pas sécuritaire d'aller chercher les corps en ce moment. J'espère que ça a répondu oui. à vos, votre Merci. question. Merci. Merci. Could you repeat that in I, certainly, I thought we had, but I can certainly say it again. <laughs> There's always different nuances, isn't there? Um, so, I hope I say it the same way as I did in French. Uh, all the families that are involved at this time have been um, 
are, are in communication with our coroner investigator. The, we have one coroner who's investigating all. Um, at this time, we know that there is one person who is deceased and that there are five people that cannot be found. Um, we cannot presume uh, the number of uh, persons that are still at the site. And so we will continue to look and keep our, our minds open as to what we will find. Um, there have been four um, human remains identified, not identified, that's the wrong word, localized at the site. Um, but as I said before, it is unsafe to access them at this time. And as soon as it's safe to do so, we will be um, recovering their remains and respectfully analyzing them to determine what the cause of their death was, what the manner of their death was, and to identify them using forensic means. Uh, it's Andrew Duffy from the Ottawa Citizen. And so just to clarify then, there is one person whose body you have. Correct. There is one person who is deceased due to the explosion and fire. They did not, they were not deceased at the scene. I, right, in, right, okay. Um, I was wondering if you could describe for us, as you walk in, what the scene looks like. It depends which area you're, you're looking at. I think uh, the, uh, the image that's gonna be released uh, in, the, um, in our release following this briefing will give you an idea of the magnitude of the destruction. Uh, the roof has collapsed. Uh, there's a large portion that's been completely uh, obliter obliterated and destroyed in the, uh, in the explosion and the fire. Uh, there's a lot of debris everywhere. We have the help of an uh, excavator and a high hole, uh, removing piece by piece carefully, uh, and making sure that uh, evidence is collected, making sure not to uh, uh, move anything that shouldn't be moved. Uh, and as uh, the, uh, the ex excavation is, is taking place, uh, we're finding uh, flare-ups that are still uh, happening throughout, so that's uh, temporarily stopping our, our work for safety. Uh, we have the TSSA and Transport Canada who are assisting us with the dangerous goods. Uh, the, um, we also ha have concerns about uh, open pits. Um, we have concerns about uh, chemicals, uh, potential uh, other flammable uh, chemicals or material at the scene. It's, um, it's a very precarious scene and we're taking our time to make sure that the investigators on scene are, are safe and uh, out of respect for, uh, for the, uh, the victims uh, at the scene. And <clears throat> can you tell us where the blast originated at this point? I mean, because we know there's different parts of this facility. There's a part that uh, functioned as a, as a garage for uh, tankers that were in operation or in use. And there's another part of the building that was used to, to actually build these things from the ground up. Can you help us understand where it originated? So that, that will all be part of our investigation. So as I said, you know, it's, it's a large scene. Um, systematically, our, our investigators will start from the outside and, and start to sift through uh, debris and evidence in order to look for pattern, uh, look for indication as to, you know, where the, you know, essentially working its way into uh, where the, uh, you know, where uh, the blast site um, could be or should be uh, based on the evidence that we've seen. So to sit there and, and, and try to determine right now where that blast occurred in that building is premature. Uh, we need, to, uh, we need to, to work our way through and determine exactly uh, what happened and then where it happened. So, you know, origin and cause is, to, is, is the big focus of the fire marshal's investigation on this. And it's gonna take some time before we have the answers to those questions. And, and who's the lead agency? There's multiple agencies that are involved. The auto police is coordinating resources. We're assisting the coroner's office with uh, their investigation. We have our arson investigators. Uh, we have the Ontario Fire Marshal and the Ministry of Labor as well. So there's several organizations. May I say that ever since um, the tragedy occurred on Thursday, everyone's been gathering 
uh, together. We have da multiple daily briefings and there's such great collaboration. It's, it's great to see because we all have one goal, to recover the victims and to try to explain the cause of the incident and hopefully prevent any future um, tragedies such as uh, we had last Thursday. And it's a, it's a unique situation uh, having, uh, you know, all these agencies together. Um, and I can, I can tell you that the coordination has been uh, outstanding um, in terms of working together uh, collaboratively. Um, parallel investigations are always difficult to begin with because uh, a lot of times you're looking for the same uh, pieces. Um, so therefore, we're, we're sharing uh, evidence, we're sharing resources, we're sharing uh, uh, the opportunity of, uh, of witnesses, uh, the statements and things like that that are collected amongst the, the group. So it's a very tight, coordinated effort amongst all the agencies that, uh, that are uh, working on their appropriate uh, investigations and mandates. Colton Pearl, CTV News. Uh, you mentioned this investigation is going to take some time. Do we have an approximate timeline for, for when we might know a little bit more about what happened? Unfortunately, no. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, oftentimes we are removing debris and we're finding other um, uh, obstacles uh, which are dangerous for the, uh, the investigators on site. Uh, we have uh, different chemicals of presence. We want to make sure that everybody on site is safe. Uh, unfortunately, we have the snowstorm coming up uh, Monday morning. That will slow down, uh, but not uh, hamper our, our efforts to, to continue the investigation. Um, so it's, it's hard to determine. We want to make sure that we do our job well. We have that duty of care to uh, the, the families and the loved ones that are still missing to conduct a proper investigation to make sure that we identify the, the, the source of, of what happened last Thursday. And so, unfortunately, I can't give a specific timeline, but it's going to take you know, days, if not more, uh, before we have any further uh, information to, uh, to provide. But we will be coordinating with the families first as soon as we do have uh, information. Uh, and, uh, and with their uh, consent, we'll be able to share uh, more information with the public. And just to, just to, to elaborate a little bit on that from the fire marshal's perspective, you know, our, our on-site investigation aspect will, will occur for several more days on site. Um, but as I said earlier, we will then take that evidence and, uh, and start to look at it from a forensics aspect, put the pieces together, and it, it, it will be some time before we uh, are, are able to provide a origin and, and cause determination um, that can be publicly released. Given the extent of the damage, the, uh, the visceral nature of the scene, is there a chance that we may never know what led to these events? So uh, uh, there, those are all, uh, all, always possibilities that, uh, you know, we may not be able to determine the exact cause. I'm not saying that that's the possibility here. Um, it's, again, too early in our investigation, but we will look at every possibility here and start ruling out and, and focusing in on, on, on the best possible origin and cause as we go through. I just want to reiterate the, the question about timeline. This is such a complex investigation and each thing has to be done in, in, in a very careful and measured way and then the information comes together to decide the next step of what needs to be done. Uh, so it's, again, I want to just reiterate um, what, uh, what Deputy Marshal um, Beckett said. It has really been uh, a collaborative effort. Everybody knows their area of expertise. Everybody respects their area of expertise. And the information is coming together and being shared freely so that we can make sure that we're moving forward in the most efficient way possible. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have right now. So a news release will be issued with the briefing of the highlights of the briefing. In that news release, we will be sharing an overhead aerial view of the site so that people have an understanding. And um, all further updates uh, to the media and to the community will be done via media releases from this point forward, okay? Alors, les points saillants de cette séance infotechnique seront disponibles sous peu et on va inclure aussi 
un visuel pour pouvoir voir vraiment la magnitude euh, des dommages causés. Toute mise à jour euh, suivant se fera par communiqué. Alors, communiqué de presse, euh, on ne planifie aucun autre point de presse pour le moment. OK? Merci. One more. That's it. Got one more. Do you have an update on uh, the other two uh, people that went to hospital? Just how they're doing. There were three that went to hospital, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. One passed away early Friday morning. Mm -hmm. The other one uh, was in uh, serious but stable condition. And the third one, I believe it was mentioned on Friday, uh, was released from hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much.